Welcome back, everyone. It's a new month. It is now April 2023, officially springtime in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's time for another call with Chris Vermeulen of the Technical Traders. I'm Craig Hemke, and this is your monthly precious metals projections from Sprott Money. Chris, nice to see you, and uh, welcome to spring. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Craig. Uh, spring is in the air. It feels great. <laughs> that it is. That it is. There's always a springtime sale. It's brought money, by the way. I'm going to first send everybody to that website. It's brought money, of course, should be one of those dealers you always check when you're in the market for physical precious metal or a place to store it. You can go to SprottMoney.com, as Chris has right there on his screen. You can see what it looks like. And then right there at the top is the phone number you can call, 888-861-0775 to talk to a human being. Great service, great prices. What more can you ask for in a bullion, bullion dealer? SprottMoney.com, the sponsor of all this great content. Chris... What a month we've had, man. Jeez, Louise, you know, we usually record these early in the month. And if we go back to early March, man, we were talking about higher for longer and Fed funds futures were pricing in as much as a 50 basis point rate hike at the FOMC that was pending in a couple of weeks. And boy, oh boy, did things change. Mm -hmm. Big rally in the bond market, rate hike expectations have flattened out and the markets have responded accordingly. Through all of that, I'm sure you've tracked all your different sectors and you've got that process that you follow called best asset now. So here five weeks since the last time we spoke, mm -hmm. what's currently the best asset now, my friend? Yeah, well, let's 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 jump like obviously gold is is a shining star. Uh, but if we go and take a look at the best asset now, the the, the hot list is what I call it. Uh, it's ranked from the best sectors uh, and works its way down to more or less the, the worst assets now at the bottom of the list. And uh, th this chart kind of breaks it down. This table tells us if people are piling into it as a risk on trade, if the short term trend is up, is if it's in like a bull market phase. And top of the list is GDX, SILJ. I only use these two on here, but pretty much any gold miner or silver miner ETF would be equivalent. Uh, so we're, we're seeing them lead the way. And today, as we're talking, they're up almost uh, 3%, 2.5%. Uh, muscling their way up and and look when last time you and I spoke they were right down over here <laughs> and now it has they have just ripped to the upside uh as as like the, the best asset now and I mean it's it's a volatile market we're in this type of market condition where we keep seeing um we, we saw gold and silver miners become the best asset now up here then they actually sell off uh, very hard and they became one of the worst assets for a little while and then they pick back up and they're just muscling their way higher. And of course, they've been in this uh, in this phase here for a long time at the top of the list, really outperforming the rest of the market. So it's it's pretty exciting. Uh, I don't know if I don't know how much uh, leg legs these have behind them before we see some market correction that might pull them back. But I mean, they're in an uptrend and they're a high momentum move. And I was talking to subscribers this morning that I have this um, this light blue line on the chart here. It's uh, this thin baby blue line, it's the five-day moving average. And it I consider that the momentum kind of play. Usually if something is in a strong momentum, it will rally and take pauses or pull back yeah. to that five-day. And it'll just keep working itself up. And yesterday I talked about here we are, gold, silver miners testing that five-day moving average. And then boom, we got a 3% rally for the next you know, this is a little bull flag pattern. It's pointing to yeah. higher prices for another uh, session or so. So another maybe two, three percent to the upside from where we are today already. Uh, so and it's like this for you know, look at silver miners. Um, similar type of of move. We've got uh, strong move rallying up, and if we zoom back a little bit, silver's haven't hasn't broken the uh, this previous high just yet. It's definitely getting into a little bit of volatility, but. They're, they're performing very well, and um, it is exciting to see. Well, since we started there, let me just ask you, where do you, what levels will you be watching on something like the GDX going forward? Are there some old resistance points that might flare up again or that maybe the price could best and get some more momentum? Yeah, I, I, I do feel like it's getting close to a little bit more of a pullback. I feel like it's starting to become a little bit of a crowded play. But until there's a type of reversal, I mean, really got to focus that it, it, it's got more upside potential. So the next key levels on this chart, I think will be somewhere right through um, 
this whole consolidation phase. So mm -hmm. if we were to look at this chart, we've kind of got a, a little bit of weird price action in here where it pushed up and sold down and then ping ponged around a bit, became support and then ping pong through this area. And so that's right where we see more or less uh, price just starting to get up to. So this is gonna be the next level where there's a lot of volume that traded through here. So anyone who bought it back at those levels, it's finally come back from the dead and they're like, I just want my money back. And so that creates that overhead resistance of uh, people who have been in a losing position all this time saying, I'm finally back, I'm ready to take some profits off and uh, or get my money back more or less. And so that'll that'll be the next kind of resistance area. So we're really close, I think, to that. Uh, the silver miners are equivalent to trading right into this kind of previous high. And so they're already right at resistance as well. So um, it's an exciting push and rally. I think there might be a little bit more upside on gold and silver miners, but then I think they're going to have a pause or pullback, but it might just be to that five-day moving average, which really in the grand scheme of things will keep moving up with it. Uh, so it, I'm, I'm not expecting any sharp pullback at this point, maybe just a consolidation that lasts a couple of days. Maybe it'll consolidate a little bit longer, but uh, that's kind of the next key level. If it can break above that $36, uh, this 36 upper band, uh, I mean, it could really pick up speed very quickly and go back up to this uh, uh, 40 range. So there's there's some pretty good upside potential for um, precious metals. I mean, they're fast movers, as you know. When they're on fire, they're on fire. When they're not, <laughs> you don't want to be holding them. <laughs> That's a lot of green candles, no doubt about that. And it yeah. has been a remarkable change in so many ways in the last five weeks. What else is on your radar? Well, if we take a look, uh, let's just take a look at the hot list. I mean, we've there, there's a big disconnect, actually. Let me just pull up the, let's pull up the text. Uh, we'll pull up the NASDAQ here, the QQQ. And I'm going to go to the daily chart real quick. And where there's a, a big disconnect that I find really interesting is if we look at what the, the tech, no, the big tech uh, and even um, healthcare have done, uh, we had the banking crisis. And with uh, Silicon Valley Bank, and they held supposedly, this is just what I read in an article, they had like something like 50% of the, the tech companies, um, they were holding some of the tech companies' money and they were a large percentage of the healthcare companies. Well, there was the obvious, the, the blip with, with Silicon Valley, and then they got more or less Silicon Valley's clients got bailed out. And of course, we've seen money pile into technology, uh, into uh, uh, growth stocks, because it's a big startup uh, bank as well. A lot of startups are in there. And so money has piled into the QQQ, which is a good sign. It's a, we want to see the, the growth stocks doing really well, leading the way. But uh, the disconnect here is we're seeing strength in the NASDAQ, which is good. But when we look at the Russell 2000, it's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. We've seen it sell off and it's really just kind of flagging in, in a bearish yeah. pattern, pointing to lower prices. And the problem here is I look at the Russell 2000 as, as a much more of a leading indicator and when we zoom back on the chart and, and look at the yeah. Russell 2000, whoops, uh, you know, it kind of put in, oops, sorry about that. Hold on. Put in this kind of topping phase right through here uh, and then it broke down and now it's kind of trading in this next, this next range through here. And it's got a bearish pattern. You know, technology, the NASDAQ is equivalent to trading up here with a bull flag and small caps are doing the exact opposite. So um, there's a big disconnect. I think the banking issue and the immediate bailout of all the clients has created this kind of news driven move into technology and the growth, some, some growth stocks, uh, small caps. I usually look at as growth stocks and they're floundering. Um, so there's that really interesting play here. And if the, the small caps start to break down, that to me is going to be a, a major warning sign that, uh, the stock market is, is definitely weakening. I mean, the majority of stocks are still in, in a downtrend overall. When you look at thousands of stocks, uh, it really is this, the big large caps doing all the heavy lifting. And the Russell 2000 is a good view of that. It's really just testing support um, where the big tech companies are kind of actually breaking out and have a bullish pattern. So that is my concern with this big disconnect that's been based around the whole banking system and everybody wondering what what the uh, the Fed's going to do with rates. I mean, everybody's swinging back and forth from one idea to the next. Yeah. And uh, it's been tough to gauge for sure. Well, you gave us something to watch there. Uh, I wonder if 
the Russell 2000 is a more broader gauge of smaller companies isn't telling us something about the recession that's coming, you know, and earnings and, and other issues that most companies might have in that environment. A breakdown, it looks like, gosh, a breakdown through that 160 level would certainly be uh, eye-opening, wouldn't it? it? It would. I mean, we could we could just kind of take a rough Fibonacci level off these, take some average prices, and that, you know, the Russell 2000 has potential to fall roughly 25% uh, just based on this past kind of sell-off and mm -hmm. consolidation in, in the current volatility. So that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a pretty big drop. That is enough for a lot of people to be startled uh, do a lot of damage uh, to a, to accounts and the large caps will, will sell off in a big way as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So then I turn that to the metals and I think, okay, if that's a possible recession indicator, there's so many others out there, obviously. Mm -hmm. And if the market is all these moves in the last five weeks are based off potential fed easing and the thought that how many times the fed might be cutting before the end of the year, well, gold and silver have responded handsomely. So let's uh, let's just focus on those two mm -hmm. with the remainder of our time. Do you want to start with gold or do you want to start with silver? Sure. Well, yeah, let's pull up gold here. Let's uh let's take a look uh, let's take a look at the monthly chart real quick. And when we look at the monthly chart, yeah, you know, we've got these these wicks up here where it, it rallied up very substantially and then pulled back we had another kind of topping wick or topping candle and here we are it's still early i mean we're only uh this is the 11th of april so we still have you know a good chunk of the month for price to potentially run up maybe even poke to nominal new highs uh and see where it closes i find the monthly chart is is a very strong tool for figuring out if it price is going to go higher or lower it's kind of a longer term investor's point of view where big money will, will move in when there's a confirmation on the on the monthly chart. You know, the next kind of category of investors is a weekly close, which is a strong. I find there's big surges of money when there's a weekly breakout. And then the daily chart is short term traders and they can pop and fizzle out, uh, you know, by the end of the week. So mm -hmm. um, as you go down in time frame from the monthly, I find it gets less accurate. So I really want to see what this wick this candle looks like, you know, the last, the first day of, of yeah. uh, May and see, see where it's at. Is it a topping candle or is it holding up strong and, and breaking out? Uh, because there's definitely the big disconnect between gold miners. I mean, if we were to just compare uh, and throw GDX in here. And take a look at these two charts. I mean, we all know that. That's for sure. <laughs> Anybody in the miners is like going, yeah, uh, I've. Yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, here we here we've got gold flirting up, you know, above above the 2011 2012 highs. Uh, gold miners are just floundering. They are down yeah. like probably like 45 or forty seven percent. So you know they're really dragging their feet. They you'd think if this was a, a full on legitimate huge breakout these things would be rocketing higher. And yes, they've rocketed higher over the past month. But when you look at the grand picture, it's really yeah. not, it's no rocket ship. It's just, you know, grinding its way higher versus being up here and like blasting off. Uh, so that is a, a big disconnect that I find, you know, might not make this, this breakout in gold legitimate. I think this is a little bit news driven, just like whenever we have, you know, some other, you know, we have war, we have some type of news event, we see gold surge and then pull back. And, and this to me is still a little bit of that, of a news driven push. Uh, you know, we're seeing the same thing with Bitcoin. Um, if you can't keep your money in the bank and you're not safe, where else do you go? Well, physical gold is, is, you know, top choice. People are moving to the cryptos because it's yep. not in, in the banking system. Uh, uh, so uh, it's definitely news driven by this whole bank event, I think. And the question is, is it going to get traction and just keep on running higher? Or are we going to see this news kind of fizzle out a bit and people, um, you know, see the, the metals pull back? Well, Chris, you've led me directly to my follow-up question. <laughs> um, back on that gold chart, uh, you know, you, it looks like a big cup, a uh, handle, a, yep. a, a flag, a consolidation over the last couple, two and a half years. In your mind, as a technical analyst, what price would constitute a breakout to the upside? Well, I mean, I I think a, a monthly a monthly chart close, 
really uh, probably above any of these opens or closes through here. So I usually I like to look if there's an open or close mm -hmm. uh, is, is a significant level. And I want to see other bars going through that. So if it can close, like even where it is right now, that's that's starting to be a breakout. A real full-on breakout will obviously be be clearing the ultimate high over here. Yeah. So it, it's got to get up. You know, 2100 would be like, okay, it is clearly closed and broken above those highs. It's off to the races. Um, so it's in that it's flirting right now in a zone where you could argue this is a, you know, right now it's broken out um, based on, on a previous open or close. Um, and so 2100 to me is going to be like kind of the final big line in the sand. Like if it clears that and closes above it, I mean, you can't help it. It's, it's broken out. It's in a bull market phase. Cup and handle patterns are, you know, uh, based on John Murphy's book, they're one of the strongest chart patterns you can get. The depth of the cup. Um, so, for example, the depth of the cup here, uh, he states that, uh, you know, price can rally two to five times um, the depth of that cup. So, I mean... <laughs> We could go really old school and see if we could just stack these yeah, on here, right? right? Right. We can just kind of go one and see if I can actually paste another one. I mean, this is just so barbaric charting. But... <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're just winging it here. Yeah, we're just totally winging it. But right. I mean, we're we're looking, you know, 20, 27, 2800 uh, is the next measured move based on Fibonacci. And it happens to be right where, you know, this this one ends. And then yeah. you go up again and the next measure, even Fib using Fibonacci brings you up to these levels. So once gold starts to run, I mean, I think it's off to the races and gold miners, if, if gold does really take off, I think gold miners are going to follow suit and uh, they could buck the bear market trend. The question is when we do get into, if we do get into a bear market in the equities uh, space, like the indexes, uh, Gold miners will most likely pause or pull back at that point, but maybe they'll they'll have already started a big run, and it'll just be a hiccup along the way. Um, and that and that's what gold did last time. For example, if we just go back and look at uh, two thousand and eight, well, we had a bear market, and gold was already in the, a super cycle. But within yeah. these mega super cycles, you can still have these minor bear markets, and so. Uh, we could see gold, silver miners rally up and then have have a quick pullback, potentially down to this breakout point um, that could last, you know, six, eight months as the stock market goes into a, a bigger correction and then just pick up speed and just keep on going, you know, up to 27, 34, all those yeah. numbers. So uh, it is definitely exciting for any gold bug. I mean, we're up near the highs. Miners are starting to come back to life. Um, and gold is on the verge of a, of a breakout and it's in a super cycle. So even if it does have a big pullback, uh, it's not going to be crazy significant. And, you know, in due time, I think it'll be worth thousands of dollars more. So it's a great long-term investment, uh, which is why I, I own a lot of physical myself. Well, we'll keep an eye on that 2090 to $2,100 level in the yeah. weeks and months to come. Let's wrap with silver. Um, silver's higher than it was back in January, late January, early February. But as you mentioned, this, the silge and the silver miners are not. <laughs> and it's also still not above those highs, as you can see on this chart that we saw back in August of 2020. And again, in uh, February of 2021, and again, mm -hmm. maybe uh, March of 2022. So what do you see there? I mean, the same kind of consolidation flag, a little cup and handle, or is that just part of a bigger cup and handle going back to those highs of 2011? Yeah, I, I I would like to think precious metals they've they've put in they've put in their base and mm -hmm. and and now this is just kind of like they've they've broken out of this lower base pattern uh, they've popped up they've had that momentum kind of trend shift from a sideways mm -hmm. market to an upward market um, I mean I I think it's bullish it's definitely far off the highs it's doing the same but that's because I think uh, I look at silver and miners. Uh, in general, as a speculative play, gold to me is like the global reserve currency. So, uh, you know, everyone gets into, not everyone, but most people get into silver and the miners for the leverage to get explosive gains if they think gold and silver is going higher. But gold itself, I think it's trading up near these these highs and starting to break out because I think there's a lot of lot of concern globally, and a lot of countries and individuals all over the world are are just, they naturally think gold. A lot of people don't go to silver. Um, I find the more basic of an investor, they think stocks, 
bonds and they'll be like, well, maybe I'll throw some gold in. They don't really go into silver. It's more the aggressive investors want to get into silver and miners. And and so there's, I think there's a lot of global concern about all kinds of stuff. And that's why gold continues to hold up and trading near the highs, because we got the whole world just trickling and buying a little bit here and there versus the speculative plays that have been beat up. They've done a lot of damage to people for like a decade. <clears throat> and um, there's a little bit of hatred and there's a little bit of nervousness to get back in and potentially relive another big correction. So that's why I think we see gold in the miners underperforming. There will be a time when they shine and blow the performance out of the water compared to gold. But um, I like I like silver. And if we zoom in on the uh, on the price action here a little bit, it still has a series of lower highs, like one, yep. two, three, four. It's had a nice run up, a nice pullback uh, based on Fibonacci extension on the, on the monthly chart. Based on the momentum we've seen, the, the next push will be right up to this previous high. So we could see it go up to around 2740 and that'll be a previous high. And um I mean, that that'll be a resistance area. It'd probably have some pause or pullback and then try to muscle its way through all these other highs over here. So it has a lot of work to do, but it it is, you know, in an uptrend, it's broken this high. It, the next stop is 2740 based on the chart here. I don't think anybody would argue with that. Um, and again, it would at least, man, just to break that string, Chris, I would think of lower highs and lower lows would be yeah. significant, wouldn't it? It would. It's the start of a new trend because it's going to yeah. have higher lows and now it'll actually have uh, higher highs, right? This mess chart's a little mm -hmm. messy, but if I clean it up and it 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 rallies up to break this high right here, I mean, now we've got one high, we're going to have a higher high. We got mm -hmm. a low and a higher low. You know, that is an upward channel. That's the definition of an uptrend. So it this will be the first point getting above 2740 where we're like, okay, the, sh the trend is technically shifted to an uptrend, which is uh, pretty exciting. Well, Chris, you've done your job. You've given us some numbers to watch. Up near $2,100 for uh, COMEX Gold and maybe $2,740 in COMEX Silver. We'll keep an eye on those over the next month, and we'll visit again in early May. In the meantime, just take a second, would you please remind everybody what you do at thetechnicaltraders.com? Sure, yeah. If you go to thetechnicaltraders.com, I focus on... Uh, providing analysis for investment capital to trade ETFs. So we focus on a strategy that really only holds assets rising in value. We sit in cash quite a bit. If the market's not favorable, we, we're waiting in cash in the sidelines. We'll move into uh, stocks or bonds or currencies um, and, and take advantage of the markets. And the nice thing is we can avoid the chaos. When things aren't favorable, we can sit on the sidelines and, and let the, the volatility just chop around and, and shake people up while we can just kind of uh, focus on, um, you know, navigating these markets. And I'm all about actively managing uh, my own portfolio. I use this strategy with my own capital and I try to, uh, my plan is to trade the least amount, but make the highest returns and to do it without multi-year drawdowns, without big uh, losses and just kind of, you know, work our way higher with our account. That's, that's my core focus. The prudent man, they would call you, right? I mean, that's a smart way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes sense. I mean, it's great. We've got a lot of great uh, investors that just have seen the light. They they realize the value of sometimes just sitting on the sidelines. And it's interesting because one of the most painful things for a trader or an active investor is sitting on the sidelines, right. watching the market move without them. They literally, I've done surveys. I've spoken with thousands of different investors over the past 25 years in traders. They would literally be active in trades and taking losses than sitting on the sidelines right. watching, sitting on the sidelines safely while the market is chopping around and they they just feel they need to be in trades, they need the action. And so the people who finally have experienced what it's like to step aside, watch the market fall apart, news go all wild, and, and we you know we're, we still continue to hold our wealth level while everything else is crumbling, or potentially watch it climb as we move into the dollar ETF or or something else, uh, they're like, why? Like, why doesn't everybody do this? They're like, this is unbelievable. It is so amazing to sit on the sidelines and like know my capital is safe, and we're just waiting for another high, uh, high opportunity, high probability uh, with low downside risk. So uh, that's my focus. Great stuff, my friend. Thank you so much for your time. It's always so insightful every month to visit with you. And like I said, I look forward to talking to you again in early May.
Yeah, should be interesting. Sell in Maine, go away. We'll be maybe the timing could be dead on. Who knows? Maybe. And for everybody watching, again, thank you for watching. And if anything, uh, check out SprottMoney.com after you leave this site, or just give us subs a subscribe or a like on whichever channel you've been enjoying this content. That helps Sprott Money cast a wider net, and it helps everybody get the message out regarding sound money and physical precious metal. Chris, thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you again next month. Thanks, Craig. Take care. Bye-bye. And for all of us at Sprott Money News, SprottMoney.com, thanks for watching. And we'll see you again next month as well.